Welcome to Garden Wise Adventures. My name is Malie and today we're going to have a fun video. It's on a topic that I've been really interested in learning about and it's about growing mushrooms. Now I have no knowledge about growing mushrooms but I have a friend named Miles Porter who has grown mushrooms for a few years now and he seems to have quite a bit of knowledge on it. He's been successful in growing them and because of the coronavirus I am not able to go do an interview with him. I wasn't quite sure how to handle it but in talking to him I decided to have him do the video and then I'll edit it and he can get online and answer questions through comments it, you know, if you have any questions. So let's show you the video that Miles did and I hope you have a wonderful garden adventure and try and grow some mushrooms. We are two wonders at dawn Of the world full of war Early sunrise I gave promise You said always and we run and dance I'm by your way Church, I'm yet and yeah, 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 my ear, I'm your ass, and no one is right, or oh, this world is so blind. Feel no doubts in your eyes, you said, Oh, we and we run in there. Hey, everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, I appreciate you, you tuning in, and thanks to Malie for asking me to assist with this video, show you guys how to grow mushrooms in your backyard or in your garden. We focus on oyster mushrooms today, but I wanted to start out with a couple of other things that will help you be successful. The first thing is, uh, every time someone hears that I grow mushrooms, or uh, most of the time they're like, wait, those kind of mushrooms? And No, not those kind of mushrooms, not the, the ones that make you high. Nothing illegal here, so we'll leave, we'll, that's the last we'll say about that. Second thing that I always hear is, oh, can you grow morels? That's a whole different topic we can uh, approach another time. Basically, no, though. Um, so let's, let's talk about different types of mushrooms that you can grow and can't grow. Um, based on the different biology requirements, um, mushrooms like morels, truffles, chanterelles, a lot of other things that you hear out there, they cannot be cultivated or haven't consistently been cultivated. Um, and so, and that, that has to do with symbiotic relationships that they require with trees, uh, with shrubs, with different bacteria in the environment. So there hasn't been a way to successfully replicate that over and over. Um, so that's not what we're going to talk about today. All right, so we can't grow morels. Sorry, guys, for the, the break there. Um, here my daughters decided they wanted to come help. So we can't grow morels. We can't grow chanterelles, truffles, those sorts of things. Um, what can we grow? We can. There are a lot of different things you can grow. You can grow shiitakes, button mushrooms, lots of different things. And really it comes down to different things that they'll grow on. So you need to think about what you're actually doing with uh, your environment, what substrates or what materials you have to grow on. So you can grow on logs, you can grow on wood chips, compost, um, or straw, like what we're doing. So button mushrooms, you know, uh, which, you know, Cremini, Button, Portobello, those are all the same exact species of mushroom at different development stages. Those grow in compost. That's not what we're talking about today. You can grow on logs, so shiitakes, lion's mane, chicken of the woods, um, some oyster species will also grow on logs. Um, again, not what we're talking about today. And then you have uh, varieties that will grow on wood chips, like loose wood chips or, or sawdust. Um, most common is like a wine cap, uh, which is Strophoeria rugoso annulata. That I have some of those growing, but we're not going to talk about that today as well. Um, that's a, that'll probably be another video. So today it's just straw. Now, when most people are growing on straw, they're going to tell you, "Oh, I need to, you, you know, you need to sterilize it. You need to do all these things." Sometimes that's true, but oyster mushrooms are actually very aggressive and you don't need to. I've done some experimentation. I've been successful with this doing kind of what they call low-tech outdoor mushroom growing and I just grow them in soaked logs and I will show you how that works. Now, um, before we move on, let's, let's talk a little bit about the life cycle of mushrooms. So I hear people like, oh, how do you plant mushrooms? Well, you don't. How do you get mushroom seeds? Well, you don't because they don't exist. Mushrooms have spores 
right? And spores, the little tiny microscopic thing, and they're distributed throughout the environment through water, wind, other, other you know, methods. Uh, and what happens is those two spores have to, well, a spore has to land and start growing, and it sends out a uh, sprout called hyphae, which uh, you get two that grow near each other, and their hyphae actually have to join together um, in order to be a viable mushroom organism. So they'll join together once they start growing, and that forms mycelium. Now this is very simplified, but that forms mycelium, which is what you're seeing here, uh, that white cobwebby stuff that you think of when you think of mold and fungus, right? Now, mycelium is actually the living part of a mushroom organ organism. Uh, that's what's doing all the growing. That's what's, you know, breaking down your substrate or your bread or your cheese, right? Like that's, that's a living part. And when you start to see the fruit, the little the mushroom body itself, that's actually fruit. Think of like the apple of the tree, right? So um, it's just important to understand because once you are trying to cultivate mushrooms, you have to think about how you're getting that spawn. So you're generally not getting spores unless you're doing sterile lab stuff and cultivating it that way. Um, generally, you're doing, you know, pre, pre-inoculated uh, substrate like these, these the sawdust spawn that just has a lot of mycelium growing in it and think of this like when you take cuttings from a plant and you, you clone them it's the same concept you take uh, sawdust spawn or sawdust and you put, put uh, some mycelium in it and it fills it out and then you put that mycelium in your straw bale and it, it grows through there and you can keep you know reproducing that uh, in that way there are different mushroom varieties uh, even within oyster mushrooms right so uh, I have growing back here, I have pohu, pohu oyster mushrooms, golden oyster mushrooms, and pink oyster mushrooms. And yeah, they're like really pink. So the reason I have different varieties is because they fruit at different times and different temperatures. And there are other types of oyster mushrooms, right? There's gray dove, Italian, king, uh, different brown oyster mushrooms, white oyster mushrooms, all kinds of things. They all have their different requirements. They all grow at different uh, temperatures. So, all the different mushrooms take different amounts of time to grow out their um, their spawn and and then fruit. Um, so, all of that said, I have these different varieties. When we inoculate, we have pohu here today. When we inoculate the straw bale, I'd expect in about three weeks, maybe four, uh, depends on the temperatures. I I should start being seeing mushrooms that I can harvest. Golden oyster is about four weeks. Pink oyster in the middle of the summer, you're two weeks. 10 days maybe so it's really kind of cool uh, fun for the kids if you're doing pink oyster mushrooms now they also have different flavors so you have golden oyster by far my favorite uh, mushroom to eat it, it, it's very delicate you can't usually get it in stores because it's so delicate they can't ship it so I like to grow that one uh, your pohu is a very aggressive oyster mushroom and that one will, will colonize very quickly fruit uh, at a wider range of temperatures earlier in the spring and uh, it's just a good mushroomy pink is actually more kind of like a seafood flavor um, not my favorite for like cooking up fresh but you dry it put it in soups and other recipes it's great so um, now that we've we've talked about all of that the other thing I wanted to mention with the spawn is this spawn so this looks terrible like if you look at this it's pretty gross looking um, this is not what it normally looks like when it comes to you. It normally looks brown, sawdust with a little bit of white in it. This thing's actually been sitting in my garage and fridge for almost a year. Now, most spawn of mushroom of most mushrooms can last that long, although you're supposed to use it within about three months. Especially oyster mushroom, though, it can last, uh, you know, a year, and you just keep it in your fridge or you know this was in my fridge then in my garage over the winter because it was cool enough and back in the fridge um, that's not the case though with every type of mushroom for example the pink oyster requires warmer temperatures and if you were to put that in your fridge it would kill it so you need to time the delivery of that in warmer months most places won't even ship it unless it's warm and then uh, you need to probably use it within a couple weeks and get it get it put into your straw or whatever substrate that you're using now where do you get this stuff? So this I actually got from a place called Field and Forest Products. Uh, probably my favorite, or I, I also order from a place called Mushroom Mountain, and I'll have Malie put 
links uh, in the description of this video to these different places. Field and Forest Products and Mushroom Mountain, both great. Um, they have tons of resources. You can go to their websites, which will be in the, in the description. And uh, those websites, there's a lot for you to learn about mushrooms. Uh, they explain all the different varieties, the different ways to grow them. They have charts that show you, if, you know, what wood types to use for different species of mushrooms. Um, that'll be really, really useful for you to go to. There's another site you should visit. It's for the Cornell Mushroom Project. And uh, if you just go to cornellmushrooms.org, that'll get you there. But there's also a, a ton of information for you to learn on there. So. Now that we've, we've talked about all of that, um, you know, let's actually get to the process of getting this in the straw bale. I'll show you how we do it. It's actually really easy. Let's get to it. So I'm just going to explain how I'm going to do this before I show you. Um, just because the first step actually has to do with soaking this, and I'd rather just show you this before we get it all soaked. Um, so getting your straw key thing here, when you get your straw bales, you want to get clean, dry straw bales. You don't want stuff that's already colonized with any other kind of fungi because it's going to compete with your mushrooms. It may not, you may not get fruity mushrooms, right? Uh, so I order, or I don't, I, I pick it up from a local source. There's, you can pick it up from a farmer, from uh, farmer's markets, from nurseries sometimes have it. Um, lots of places to get it. It's not too expensive. Just make sure it's been covered and, and it's clean and dry. The other thing people don't realize about straw bales, there's a top of the straw bale and a bottom. And what I mean by that is the top of the straw bale is the, the side that has the hollow ends. So if I were to flip this over, you'd see that the other side of this, the, the little pieces of straw, are actually bent like this, right? So there's no opening, whereas this side, they're open with the, the hollow end up, right? So that's important because when you soak this, and you set up your irrigation system on it, you're gonna want the water to go inside those hollow tubes, uh, not just run around it, right? So that'll be important to retaining moisture in, in your straw bale. And normally I would take the straw bale and I'd put it back there exactly where I want it because once I soak it, it's gonna be really heavy. Um, for the purposes of this video though, I'm gonna do it here because it's just easier to film. Um, and all we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up once we get our log soaked, we're gonna take the trowel, we're gonna just put it randomly throughout the straw bale all right so real quick we'll go get the hose we'll soak it and then uh we'll get started so we're just going to soak it down really good you want to soak it so well that it uh, starts running out the bottom get it thoroughly wet so we'll just keep soaking it not running out of the bottom yet just like this on the top not so much the sides it won't really matter but on the top here okay so we soaked our straw bale uh, now we're ready to inoculate it with the sawdust spawn. So, uh, something I forgot to mention about the sawdust spawn. This is a half bag, and normally I'd have a full bag, and I'd just take this thing and, you know, beat it up, uh, break it up really good. You can see it's starting to actually get brown again. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like. It's some, you know, it's just sawdust with mushroom mycelium growing through it. And the thing I forgot to mention is that with this being a half bag, uh, a full bag is usually five pounds and it's gonna cost you about $20, $25 depending on where you get it. Uh, maybe plus shipping, depending on what promos are going on. Um, most, uh, most varieties I'm gonna do the full five pounds in this. If you were doing really sterile, you wouldn't need that much. But uh, because we're doing low tech, non-sterile, we'll, we'll do that much. Now, uh, let, that's what I did with the golden oysters and it was great, I had tons of mushrooms last year. Um, if you're doing grain spawn, that usually comes in about four pound bags and I, again with the pink oysters I did the full four pounds. Um, now this variety, this pohu, that's P-O-H-U, pohu oyster is super aggressive so I only did one bale last year and I did half the bag, so about two and a half pounds. Saved the rest for this bale for this year. and. Um, we'll show you later, but that one's actually still coming back. Um, some varieties will continue year after year until they've totally broken down the straw bale. So it's not just a one one time go. They'll they'll make a flush of mushrooms. Then you'll pick them. They'll reset and kind of grow out for a few more weeks. Then flush another flush of mushrooms. Right. And we'll keep doing that throughout the growing season. Um, now, let's let's break this up. Get it ready to go. And then what? We'll, and you can see. We have to break that up. Now what we're gonna do. 
<laughs> my help is here. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna, once they get that broken up, we're just gonna take this trowel like this, pry it open, and we're gonna put the, the spawn throughout this straw bed. And I'm actually gonna get a bigger shovel. Uh, this one works a little bit better. Um, and I do this because then I can get it a little deeper down into the straw. This bale is actually a pretty tightly packed bale, so this sometimes can be kind of hard. So here we go. Just go, go like this. Stick your, your shovel down in there. Pry it open a little bit. And then all I do is I take a handful of this and I just drop it down in there. And I just kind of work it like this. And just, just pack it in there like that. And just try to get it down in there. And I'm just going to keep doing that throughout this, this whole bale. Um, if I have a lot of leftover, I, could, I may do it on the sides uh, or the ends, but it's a lot easier to go in from the top because they break apart in these little sheets, right? So let's do a few more of these. And we'll just drop it down in. And it doesn't have to be perfectly covered, right? Because all you're, you're trying to do is just tuck it down in there, get the, the mycelium to where it's going to be uh, in the moisture, have some straw to grow on, and it'll spread on its own through the rest of the bales. So you don't have to get perfect coverage. Um, one thing you may notice, depending on where you get your straw and how it was, you know, the condition it was in when it was harvested, it may have grain in it. If you see grain start to grow out of the top of the bale, just pull it out. It's not the end of the world, but um, it, it does compete a little bit with the mushroom just because it's taking up resources. You don't want to grow a bunch of grain. You can just pull it out, feed it to your chickens, or throw it in the compost or something, right? So I'm just going to keep doing this uh, throughout the bale until we're done. And then once we're done, I'll show you uh, the setup we have over here. Okay, so we've got it uh, all in there. I've got the, the bale moved where I want it. I'm gonna soak it down more after I've got it all on there. Um, I'm gonna show you this setup and what, what we've got going on here. So what you can see, I've got uh, four straw bales in there. And then actually in the back, I've got some logs that I'm growing, well, that'll be another video. Um, but you've got 70% shade cloth on the top. You've got some trees around it. You need to grow these things in mostly shade, right? If they get too much sun at all, they're not gonna grow. Um, they'll just burn up, they'll dry out. You won't get anything good. So you can see I've got it just kind of propped up here. Um, here's the one we just did. We'll get that watered in even better. Back there I've got, uh, this is the pink oyster mushroom. Over here is the old pohu oyster. And actually you can see, get real close here, there's some little guys just starting to grow this spring. Um, we'll see, they, they get much bigger, but we'll have them grow out. And then, over here, this is, this is my golden oyster. You can see some mycelium starting to grow right here. Uh, this thing kind of fell apart. That golden oyster just chewed this puppy right up. Um, so I'm going to see if they come back. Golden oyster sometimes doesn't come back after the winter. Now, what you can see I've got going on here, I've just got some uh, tubing, drip tubing. I've got some bubblers on it. And I just kind of stick the bubblers around on top of the straw bales, usually two per bale maybe. I might, I might go up to three. Um, but all I'm doing is I'm running those pretty much every day, uh, making sure this stays wet. That's key, obviously, <laughs> you're growing fungi, you need it to be wet. So shade, wet, uh, and then I just kind of leave it and I just check it periodically and you can come out and pick them off. I usually cut them off. We can show another video when they get growing about how that all works. Um, but that's that's kind of how you do it. So if you have any questions, post them down below. I'll make sure and uh, jump on here and answer them. And thanks, everybody. We are two wonders at dawn of the world.